Right, we're playing another game of Pikeman's Lament. On the table you can see the two forces, so let's have a better look at them. Approaching from the south is the Bastardly Baron, and you can see here we have a unit of cuirassier, the uh, lobster heads. We have a unit of raw shot, a unit of pike, a field gun, which is a heavy gun, very good at shooting, uh, a raw shot, and another unit of cuirassier. Arriving from the north, we have the dastardly duke. If we go over here, we have one unit of trotters, another unit of trotters, a unit of pike, a unit of shot, a third unit of trotters, another unit of pike. And much like last time, I think the first few turns is going to be lots of maneuvering and maneuvering, some failed orders and so on. So I'm going to get those out of the way in a fast motion and I'll come back to you when we start getting into the nitty gritty. We've given both of our units of Cavaliers uh, aggressive, which means they get wild charge. So let's test to see if there's a wild charge because they're definitely in range for that. That means we need to test for an attack activation and uh, just see what happens. So the attack activation for the Gallopers is five up. So with a four, they fail that, which means they don't wild charge, but it doesn't turn over back to the, uh, the other side. Um, however, they are pretty much going to try and do exactly that, so let's, let's have them do that anyway. They do, so they, they are able to charge in. Right, they are going to be attacking with 12 dice, and they have an attack value of 3 up. So 9 hits. So 9 hits against a stamina 3 trotters, and causes 3 wounds on the trotters. Now the trotters will be able to defend back, defending on four up. So they get 12 dice needing four. So that causes two casualties in return. Okay, the Cavaliers won that combat and they have the wild charge, which means they will pursue ideally. But because they both took casualties, both units now have to take a morale test. So the Cavaliers will be testing with morale needing a five up um, because they took two casualties. So we need five or more and they succeed. And the roundheads will need to take, uh, will need seven up. And they also succeed. Now, because we have wild charge, we fight another round of combat immediately. So we have three ups from the cavaliers. So they take two more casualties. And then they have fours to defend. So they only do one in return. So they're, they've lost that round of combat again, so they have to retreat. They retreat another two inches. They retreat half their move backwards. And they will take a morale test again, this time at minus five, so they need nines or more. And they succeed. Right, we'll have the shot over here, I think. Uh, fire at that unit of pike in the town. So they get 12 dice, they need a five up normally, but because there is the first fire of the game, they only need a four. One casualty. It will then take a morale test at minus one, which means it will pass on a five up. And with a four up, it doesn't, which means it's wavering. And we need to test for wavering before it activates. Regimental field gun will attempt to fire in it's within six inches of the commander, so it will need a seven to fire. It fails, and we turn over to this side here. Right. I think we're gonna have the unit on the far flank. No, first we have to try and rally this unit over here. So they'll need to try and rally on a five, which they do. And that's all they can do this turn. We are going to have the pike on the far flank move on a five up, and they succeed. Mm. 
we are going to have the trotters move around on a four up and they succeed. And we'll have the unit of shot move up on a four up, which they succeed. Lastly, we're gonna have the units over here. We're gonna have the one on the far flank, Caracol, which is a move and then shoot and then attack. So that's an order that requires an eight, so let's see. And it succeeds. So they move half their distance, 12 dice needing fives. So take another casualty here. So now I have to take a morale test with the Cavaliers on a seven, which we pass. And now we move into combat. Now, the Cavaliers have the ability to countercharge. Right, in order to countercharge, this unit just simply has to pass an attack order. So it passes on a five. It fails, so they, they don't. Otherwise, they, they would count as attacking and they would, they would get all the bonuses for that. So. And moving into the flank, there aren't actually any flanks or rear charges in Pikeman's Lament. Um, as you can see, I'm using multi-bases and you're meant to use single bases, really. I just think it looks nice. So first we roll for the attack. The trotters will need fives. Three, so they cause one casualty. And in defense, the cavaliers will also need fives. So that's two casualties onto the trotters. So they have to retreat back. And both units will have to take a morale test. The trotters will be taking a morale test on sixes. which they pass, and the Cavaliers are taking a morale test on nines, which they fail. So they will move back after their move, and they will become wavered. We will have the half-decimated unit of trotters do exactly the same. So they will attempt to uh, caracol. They will need an eight to do that, and they fail. So we're now over to this side, so let's see what's going to happen. The first thing we'll need to do is, is try and rally this unit. So it will need a nine. So it will continue to retreat half its move. Next, we are going to attempt to fire with the shot here. This unit of raw shot will be shooting into the gallopers. Shooting will be a six up, which they fail. So let's go back over to this side and see what uh, what are they going to do? Right, we're going to order this unit of shot to move, and it will need to move on a four, which succeeds. It's going to move three inches, which is then going to place it in range in the next turn for some firing action. We're going to order this unit of pike in the far flank to swing around, and they will need to move on a five, which they succeed with and we will move this unit of trotters. They are going to move, well, they're gonna caracal, um, which is a, a half move, shoot, charge kind of action, um, but they're not gonna have enough range to, to get into combat, but they can move and then shoot, so that's what I'll do. Move two inches, which puts them in line of sight of this unit of shot, and they'll fire 12 dice, needing fives. Two, three, four. And raw shot has a stamina of two. So that's two hits on the raw shot. Now they will have to take a morale test. They have a morale of four up. Uh, the pike behind to follow up, they will need fours and they succeed. Yeah, this unit will attempt to caracal, needing an eight. It fails, but that's no big deal. Right. Let's try and rally this unit here. It will need a nine. Yep, it's not within range of the commander, so it will need a nine to rally, because it's got a morale of, uh, well, sorry, three, no, I need eight to rally, sorry. They have morale of three, minus five is eight, so they need eight or more. And now look, because we rolled, less than the amount of casualties that we've we've taken this unit routes completely and is removed from the game so the royalist left flank has uh, taken a severe blow there right we'll order this unit to fire into the trotters 
it will get 12 dice needing fives, but it has to pass a shooting test, which is on a seven up. So six up because of the command. And they fail. So the initiative is over to, to this side. So um, I think they're gonna press, try and press their advantage home, I think. So they're gonna move, they're gonna attempt to fire with this shot here. So they need sixes because they're within range of their commander and they succeed. And this is their first shot of the game. So they will get, excuse me, they will get 12 dice needing fours. That's enough to cause one casualty on this unit here. And it will test for morale. Morale for Pike is a four. So it would be five, but then we have the commander. So it's back to four again. So we pass. We will have these trotters caracol here, I think, which will need a seven because of the commander in chief being attached. And we fail. So the gallopers are within charge range of this unit of pike now. We didn't test them last time, we should have done. So they'll have a wild charge with uh, an attack of five up. So they succeed, which means they've, they're forced to, to charge into this pike. They will get 12 attacks needing threes. So they're gonna cause three casualties to that pike unit. Defending on fours. One casualty in return. So they need to retreat half a move back. And because they are impetuous and wild charging, they fight another round of combat immediately. So let's run that again. So we need threes for the cavaliers. So, and in return, we need fours. So that's two casualties in return. So it's a stalemate. And if it's a stalemate, the attackers withdraw. So the attackers will move backwards. But now we have to take some more morale tests. So the gallopers will need a five, which they get. And the pike, so they'll need nines, minus one again, because they are under half strength. And they get it with a 10. Right, let's have our voluntary activations for, for this side over here. I think we are going to have this unit of shot fire again into that unit of trotters because they're about to get made into uh, mincemeat very shortly. So they will need a six, which they get just, and then they'll be hitting on fives against that unit. So there's only one casualty on that unit. That is enough to cause them to take a morale test. So they have a morale of four, so they'll need five or more, which they get this pike into close order, this pike here, and it will then activate attack or move on a six instead of a five, because we've got a commander here, it'll still be a five. Um, so let's try and get them across to shield the shot. And uh, once again, we have our commanders facing off in the breach. Uh, we will have our, well, attempt to have our shot move on a five, and they succeed. With a double six, it succeeds really well. So let's see what happens. With a three, one unit regains first salvo. So I'm gonna give it back to this unit here, uh, because I think they're probably gonna end up being, um, they're gonna need it, I think. They're the only, they're essentially the only musket unit that's uh, that's on our side that has fired anyway, so we'll give it to that unit. Right, and this unit will move up. And we'll fire with our field gun, and we'll need an eight to fire with it. We get it, finally. The field gun has got 12 shots with a shoot value of three plus, and it's firing into the white unit of shot over there. That's enough to cause four casualties. So they are exactly half strength. And so they will now need to take a morale test at minus four and then minus five for being a half strength or under. And as a six, they don't. So now they're wavering and they will retreat. That's actually all of the royalist activations. So we're gonna voluntarily pass ourselves over now to the parliamentarians. The first thing they need to do is try and rally this unit over here. So they will need uh, to roll an eight or above. And they don't, which means they take another casualty and they retreat again. 
Right, we'll have, I think we're going to try and swing around here. So let's have this unit of trotters activate a move on a 5+, plus, which they succeed. We'll have the unit of half-strength trotters do exactly the same, but they fail. So we're now we're back into this, uh, this side of the battlefield. We're going to uh, attempt to resist a wild charge over here, needing under a five, uh, which we failed. So we now we have enforced cavalry charge in this corner. We just move move some trees out of the way so you can see enforced cavalry charge in this corner. So same as before, the cavalry will get threes. So that's enough to cause three wounds. And in return, the, the defending unit only has, uh, it's a half strength, so it only has six dice, and it needs six dice needing fours. And that's not enough to cause a casualty on the trotters. So now, eight casualties, oh no, so eight casualties is, uh, they've been wiped out. So actually this unit is removed. For some reason I thought it was 12 casualties, but no, it's, it's eight. So now the victorious um, cavalry, uh, they, because they can't pursue a unit that has been destroyed, they must make a full move towards the closest visible enemy unit, which will be across this way. Okay, we are gonna see, no, we're not in range of anything with this shot. So this shot needs to move up pretty, pretty sharpish. So they'll need a five to move, which they get just. We'll have this unit of shot attack, uh, shoot the trotters first. Move our person out of the way. So we have, I keep forgetting to check for lucky blows. Whenever a unit that contains an attached commander takes casualties, you have to roll a dice on a double one, that Officer is a casualty. Keep forgetting to do it, so let's make sure we do it this time. Right, so we're gonna get, uh, we need a seven, a uh, six, because we're in, within command range to shoot. We fail, well, what a reprieve. Uh, first we need to rally this unit over here, sorry. So that's, they're gonna need eights or more. So they managed to rally it off, that's good. We'll have this unit of trotters attempt to move around, needing uh, five, and they succeed. Here. We'll have the unit of trotters in the back do the same. They succeed. We've got a bit of a log jam going on over here, haven't we? Let's have this unit of shot attempt to fire upon the cavaliers. They will need a six because they're within command range. And they fail. We're, gonna have, we're still going to have this, this unit of shot attempt to fire first. So they will need sixes. So that's enough to cause one casualty. So the trotters will now take a morale test at uh, five plus, which they just get. And now we'll have the pike attempt to attack. So because they're in close order, they will need a six to attack, which they get. Yeah, it's, it's even Stevens, four, four attacks and four defenses. So because we had a bit of a stalemate, the attackers withdraw. Let's put them back to where they, roughly where they were and they both take a morale test. So both units, well this will take a morale test on a six plus, uh, and they fail. So they are going to withdraw and waver. And this unit will take a morale test at minus one, so they will need uh, fives, and they succeed. But I'm gonna take advantage now of the, uh, the fact that we have a line of sight into that unit of trotters from our field gun over here, attempt to fire. So it needs a, an eight plus to shoot, and it fails. Wonderful use of six points, this uh, massive field gun, <laughs> certainly. Okay, we're gonna hand over to the, the Duke and see what he's gonna do, right? I think he's definitely gonna try and caracol with this unit eventually, but first we're gonna try and morale test that out. So we need uh, six on board, and we succeed. So that unit is no longer wavering and we will have this unit of shot fire into the cavaliers i think they all need sixes and they fail with a four so we're over to the baron again the baron this side now being somewhat more secure um, i think the baron's going to have this this gap be plugged up by the pike so let's do that with a five up it succeeds move the pike into this gap here and just cause, cause problems for anyone trying to get through that way. Um, we are then also gonna have the these uh, shot fire into the trotters. So 
Yeah, there's no face, there, there would, because I'm using regimental bases, you might think that there are things like facing, flank, arcs, and so on, um, but in Pikeman's Lament, there aren't. You just fire any direction you want, move any direction you want, so hence the uh, rather abrupt pivot there. They will be needing a seven to fire, but they're six because they're within command range. And they get it just. So they will have 12 shots, needing fives. So that causes one casualty on the trotters. So they will take a morale test at needing the sevens. And without it, they don't. So they have to withdraw. We will have, ah, we didn't test for, uh, and a wild charge over here, which is exactly what we should do now. So they will need to get a five or under, so a one to a two to four to not charge. And with a six, they they do charge. And it's only now I realize we definitely forgot to do the lucky blow rolls for those two officers in that combat last time. Say Levy. Let's do this combat over here now. So attackers have threes, four casualties on the, the trotters, and the trotters defend on a four. Oops. Trotters defend on a four. So, so they cause two casualties in return. So they've taken three, they cause two, so that means they they lose that casualty. So that lose they lose that combat. So let's see. Alright. And with a six. The six is less than the number of casualties they've taken. They've taken seven casualties, so the unit is removed along with the commander. So now we have to take a morale test for all of the units on the parliamentarian side. This unit over here, um, that's already wavering, will need to take a morale test, and it will need a seven, which it passes. This unit will need a nine, which it fails. So this unit of pike in the middle will need a five, which it gets. And the unit of shot will need a 10 because it's under half strength. It doesn't. Now, this unit of horse um, will have to attempt to charge any unit that it can. Threes for attacking. So we cause three casualties on that unit. And in response, they get 12 dice needing fours, and cause two casualties. So they've lost that combat, so they must retreat. And the, the impetuosity of the cavalry only lasts, cavaliers only lasts for one turn. You don't continue to do this throughout the rest of the game. And so they will um, now both have to take a morale test. So the cavaliers are, they have a, a high morale. I have a morale of three, but now they're gonna be at minus six and they're under half strength, so they're gonna be at minus seven. They are just within command range though, so it'll be back to minus six. So I'm afraid with uh, a result of a four, and uh, that's less than the number of casualties they've taken. So the Cavaliers, despite winning that combat, have decided that their fortunes lay elsewhere and have legged it completely off the battlefield. In return, that pike uh, will now have to test, and it will test at minus four, so it will need eight or above. And with a double one, so that pike has disintegrated as well. So let's switch over to what was left of the Duke's army and we'll try and rally these off. So this unit of trotters will need a seven, and it doesn't, so it takes another casualty and it retreats. This unit will need a 10, it doesn't, so it takes another casualty and retreats. And this unit over here will also need a 10, it doesn't, so it takes another casualty and retreats. And I think that is a very appropriate point to end the game. We had a real reversal of fortune here. Early losses on this flank um, for the Royalist side saw, almost saw the parliamentarians win. But the use of this bridge and this dry gully as a kind of defensive bulwark to stop the trotters from being able to manoeuvre in and the difficulty of manoeuvring through the town meant the, the Royalists were able to hold out. And in fact, plugging this gap, allowing these pikemen to shuffle across and, and hold this um, while the rest of the work was happening, um, I think managed to win the day.